I'm Hillary Hendershot, your host, and this is Profit Boss Radio, episode 104. Profit Boss Radio is your weekly wealth mastermind. Profit Boss is also a community and a movement for women who are ready to take control of their money, break the glass ceiling, and give ourselves permission to finally have enough. Want the secrets of wealth to be yours? This is the place. I'm Hillary Hendershot. I'm a certified financial planner running a leading advisory firm for women, and I'm sharing with you real stories from real life and real women who are making it happen. Forget Wall Street. Let's do this, ladies. I'm pleased to introduce to the Profit Boss Radio audience a wonderful sponsor, creditrepair.com. And if you've got anything but beaming pride about your credit score, I want you to give them a call. Creditrepair.com can help make sure that there's nothing on your credit report that shouldn't be there. I can tell you from personal experience, though, full disclosure, I didn't use creditrepair.com, but I can tell you credit repair works. It worked for me, and I now have a near perfect credit score. Visit their website at creditrepair.com or call 1 833 333 2282 today to learn more. Well, Profit Boss, if you didn't know, April 10th is National Equal Pay Day. As women, there's a good chance we're missing out on approximately 20% or more out of our paychecks due to gender pay inequality, as men get paid more for than we do to do the same work. When looking at how it adds up over the lifetime of your career, that's a huge chunk of change. And not only are you losing out on that actual pay, but also potential earnings if you had invested that money. That's bad. While the pay gap may seem to be closing, it is happening at a very slow pace. Given the current rate, we women will not achieve equal pay on average until 2152. Let's not wait that long. Do me a favor and share this episode of Profit Boss Radio as one step you are making towards ensuring that women are paid fairly. And join the Profit Boss movement by joining our Facebook group at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash Profit Boss. Happy Equal Pay Day. Hello, Profit Boss. I am talking today with a self-made woman who wants to encourage and empower you to be a self-made woman. Her name is Nellie Galan. She is a Latina media dynamo and a women's empowerment advocate. She's also been dubbed the Tropical Tycoon by the New York Times Magazine, is one of the entertainment industry's savviest firebrand talents. She's an immigrant and a self-made media mogul. She was the first Latina president of entertainment for the U.S. television network, Telemundo. She's an Emmy Award-winning producer of over 600 episodes of television in Spanish and English, including the Fox hit reality series, The Swan. And now here's something interesting. In 2008, she appeared on the first season of the NBC hit, The Celebrity Apprentice with Donald Trump, joining an all-star cast, including Gene Simmons, Nadia Comaneci, Marilu Henner, and the infamous Omarosa, everybody's favorite woman to hate. <laughs> Galan's appearance on the show, she, where she raised a quarter million dollars for her charity, Count Me In for Women's Entrepreneurship, cemented her reputation as one of the nation's top female thought leaders. Nellie, welcome to Profit Boss Radio. Oh my God, you're so energetic. You're like me. You're even more energetic. I love you. <laughs> well, I love what I do. You're, we're here to talk about your book, Self Made. And you know, I look at your I look at your background. And I see media mogul, star. And you're so beautiful. And I'm just wondering, okay. what had you pivot to being an author and a women's empowerment advocate? Well, you know what? I, I have always actually, uh, thank you for saying that I'm beautiful, but <laughs> actually I've been a hidden figure woman my whole life. I've really been a behind the scenes person um, that started as an intern, was an immigrant, became an assistant, worked my way up. And I've done everything as slow as a turtle, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I've always felt like a behind the scenes person. Um, but I was always like, the, you know, the girl that, you know, stayed late. I've worked for I've worked for seven billionaires and I was like the one doing all the work and getting no credit. And but I did turn my a lot of my bosses into investors in my business because I was really I was the goody two shoes. 
I never finished college until recently. So, you know, I feel like I'm a great example for people because I really had nothing that together, except that I'm the hardest worker in the world and that I'm a smart person. And I listened to people smarter than me and I would stay late and I would say, well, they're not smarter than me. If they could do it, I could do it. So I say the same thing to all the women listening. If I could do this, if by 45 years of age, I could be retired, which I'm never gonna retire, but I could be retired and I could take myself back to school. I could get a master's and doctorate. And I started out with nothing, no contacts, immigrant, started out as an intern, no education, just working really hard. If I could do that, all of you can do it too. But with, with the caveat that I've been very good with my money and I did, and I'm, I, I, you know, look, I believe in money management more than anything because I've always lived beneath my means. Yes. And I was very cautious and I saw that the billionaires I worked for all did it by, they were like, they were cheaper than anybody I knew. All the people that were like, that made money and were acting rich and buying Jaguars and going on trips were really broke. And the people that were really wealthy counted every paper clip. <laughs> Hopefully not the paper clips. <laughs> I know I'm exaggerating, but I'm, but I followed those people. I didn't follow the grandiose people. You took yourself back to school. I wasn't expecting you to say that. What, how, what, tell me a little bit about that decision. Well, in 2008, when the economy crashed, I was running a very, very busy uh, television production company, producing like a hundred shows a year. And all our shows got slowed down because the economy crashed, right? And I said to my husband, oh my God, because I, you know, as an immigrant, I always worry like the money's going to go away. And he's like, are you kidding me? You've been such a good girl. You took all your money. You bought buildings. The buildings are rented. You don't have to work another day in your life. And he goes, why don't you look, just take a year off. The economy is horrible. Why don't you take a year off? If you were going to die in a year, what would you regret in your life? And I said, I'd regret I didn't finish school and not because I needed it. Like you're, you're going to see, I didn't study business. I felt like I learned business on the job. Right. I, I regretted it because my eight year old son at the time said, mom, why should I go to college? You didn't finish college and you've done really well. And I thought, no, I, I don't agree with that. And so I took myself, I said, I'm going to go back to school for a year and finish my BA because I only had a couple credits left. And then when I went back to school, I thought, I deserve, I deserve this. And I did, you know, you'll see that I'm a type A. I did a four-year program that was a master's and doctorate in clinical psychology. It was a six-year program, and I did it in four years. Amazing. Okay, we're going to circle back to why you chose. And I think that was the greatest thing I ever did in my life and the best decision I ever made in my life. Okay, I want to talk more about empowering women to be self-made, but I definitely want to circle back to, because clinical psychology is like... Well, but you know what? The reason, the reason you asked me, why would I do all this empowerment? Had I not taken four years off, gone to school, and written my dissertation on multicultural women and how they were having a revolution economically by necessity. If I hadn't written that, and the psychology of multicultural women, how it was changing in America... I would have never done my entire next career path. Really? Yeah, that's what inspired me. Talk a little bit about the revolution. In 2008, when the economy crashed, most women were not Sheryl Sandberg, who I love and, and is a friend, who goes to Harvard, comes out of Harvard, and has three jobs and gets stock in a company and becomes a billionaire. Most of us don't go to the right schools. Most of us have had obstacles. We have children, we have immigration, we have parents dying. And so the women in, in multicultural families out of necessity, so many fathers and husbands had lost their jobs that they, in a digital age, ran to entrepreneurship. And it began, the be, you know, it was the beginning of, of, a, of a revolution, uh, a women's movement, if you will, for multicultural women that was economic. And that got me excited because, you know, I'm, I'm on a lot of boards and, you know, I work very closely with a lot of Fortune 500s. And in one of my Coke uh, board meetings, they said to me, Nellie, if someone went out and told women, if someone basically informed women of all the economic opportunities, if we became, if these women became financially literate, 
in one or two generations, it would completely change the economics of all these um, groups of, of, of people uh, and their communities because women bring the money back to their communities and to their families. And I thought that's worth doing. I could do that in one or two generations. That's amazing. That's and, and that really is what's happening, you know, I, and financial empowerment changes everything for a woman. Yes, of course. You know, I tell women all the time, look, I am set for life. Okay. Does money make you happy? Not, not directly, but I'll tell you what it does do. It gives you options, choices. I have all the choices in the world. Even if I get depressed, I mean, how bad is it if I get depressed and I have to go to Canyon ranch for a week? I mean, <laughs> if I, if I have a boss, or a partner that sucks, I can get out of it. If I have a relationship that's bad, you know what? I'll get over it because I have the money to, to move on. I, I don't think women realize because we've never had power what power feels like. It feels good. <laughs> that's why men want it so badly and they fight and they'll kill people for it. But we don't know what that's like because we're always like, I don't need money. I'm not doing this for money. If I hear one more of my friends say they want to run a nonprofit, I go, are you rich? Because if you're not rich, you're making money first and then you can give back like I'm giving back now because I have the money to give back. Yeah. I, you know, and you, you survey women, what would you do if you won the lottery or received a half million dollar inheritance tomorrow? And the first thing that women say, talk about is all the people they would give it away to. I know. And I, and it, it's, I like, I love that benevolence. I love the generosity, but it's like, make sure your own oxygen mask, mask is affixed first. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, absolutely right. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, you want, you want women to change their mindset from instant gratification to goal orientation. That's right. What That's do you right. think is the best way to do that? I, well, first of all, let's start with why we do it. I think we have to say the truth, which is, Women, all of it, we do have a harder life than men, both personally and business-wise. Mm -hmm. And everything we do is long-term gratification, everything. And so I get it when we, like, want to feel good and we buy makeup and we buy, you know, a hot dress and a, a Birkin bag. But guess what? You know, it's like watching Sex in the City. You know, you have 500 pairs of shoes. It's not going to buy you an apartment. It's not going to buy you a piece of property. And I think that we have to really, like, for me, I can, I can tell you how I do it. I think that when you want to lose weight, for me, the only way I have ever lost weight is I put a picture of me fat and I put a picture of me thinner next to it. And I look at it every day because if not, I don't have the willpower to do what I have to do to lose the weight. Mm -hmm. And I think money is the same. I think that what you have to do is write down your goals and not little itty bitty goals like Oh, I want to go on vacation this summer. That's a short-term goal. I want you to say, I want to own a house with no mortgage on it. I want to, you know, own my own company. I want to own a building. I want to be retired by the time. Declare it. Sometimes people don't want to declare things because then they go, oh, I'll be disappointed if it doesn't happen. If you don't declare it, if you don't see it every day, subconsciously, you're like setting the bar very low for yourself. You know, I did a list when I was 20 years old and it was like, I want to own a building outright. I want to own a house. I want to own a place in my country of origin, which is Cuba. I settled from Miami because Cuba is a communist regime. I want, I want my kids to go to college and I want to pay for me to go back to school. I'm on list number three. I did that list 20 years ahead of schedule. That's amazing. And I, I love how you articulate the setting of big goals. I meet so many women who will say to me, I don't know how, I don't even know how to save $10,000, right? And it's like, oh, like we're, we're lost because you need a lot more than $10,000. And people who say, I don't need to be a millionaire. I, I don't need all that. I'm a simple person. Well, I got news for you. You know, unless you live in some square state where the cost of living is, you know, nothing. Yeah, you do kind of need to be a millionaire because it takes a lot of money to live in this world. And it takes... Well, I show women what it takes. If you live, if you were to retire at 65 and you live to be 85, which good luck because all the millennials will live to be 100. Yeah. You need, for at $5,000 a month, you need $1.2 million. So I don't think people realize, they go, I don't need to be a millionaire. You have to be a millionaire. Yeah, you have Period. to. <laughs> to survive, to pay, and the 5000 a month, in inflation is like you're living at the poverty level. So if you, if you need 10,000 a month, 
which in any of the cities, like if you live on the East Coast or the West Coast, you, it's more like you need 20000 a month. It's so expensive that you would need at least 2.4 to $4.8 million to live, to, to survive. I don't think people realize that. Like being a millionaire is not being a millionaire anymore. It's yeah. like you need, you just need that money to survive. So I don't think people get it that it's not that you want the money. It's that you're, you can't survive without the money or you're going to be homeless. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You're going to get to that 85 mark, realize, guess what? I'm still here. I outlived my money. I can't work anymore. Like I used to tell everyone I was going to work forever. Now what? Now yeah. what? Right? Yeah. And it's scary. So, you know, what, so just to, you know, you, you seem larger than life. What are some of the mistakes you made along the way to your own success? Oh my God. I've made so many mistakes. You know, I love telling people, which is true. You know, if you were to watch my bio reel, you're like, man, that girl's successful. Well, first of all, I'm a turtle. I'm slow as molasses. I do everything slowly, but I win the race in the end because completion, you have to complete everything you begin. And if you do, and if you only do, you know, I always say, I, I, I tell myself every year at the beginning of January, accomplish three things this year. And one could be laser hair removal, which takes a year. It doesn't have to all be grandiose. If you complete three things a year, which means you have to do three things a day, three things a week, three things a month, you actually win the race while everybody else is trying to do 50 things and complete none of them. I think that for me, the mistakes I've made, I, I, I've made so many. I mean, first of all, in business to have two or three successes, which I've had, I've had to fail thousands of times. And I think people don't say that enough. I've had to change my relationship to fear and failure. And I've had to make fear and failure my best friends. When I'm afraid, I just go do it anyway, do it anyway, do it anyway. And when I fail, which is often, I go get back on the horse, get back on the horse or you're going to be afraid, get back on the horse. Because it happens more than, you know, like today I had a beautiful day because I went after a property and I got it and it's like a high. Well, that happens, you know, once every X amount of years that the high happens. The rest of the time it's like battling, battling, and most of the things don't work. But if you stay in the game, if you complete things, you will win. I have won big without winning the lottery, without being J-Lo, without being, you know, an athlete, just like a normal person, a behind the scenes, normal person. I I've done, I've gotten to win in big ways. I am not exactly your average financial advisor. I don't have a receding hairline, a beer belly, a suit and tie, or a tea time scheduled for 2.30. So those actually might be stereotypes more than anything else, but many financial advisors also have something else in common. They don't believe you matter as an investor unless you have a half million dollars ready to invest right now. My team and I created Ignite Investing as our answer for investors who want to actively build their wealth with accounts starting at $25,000. Being a part of Ignite Investing means you get customized financial advice built around your one-page annual financial action checklist. We also give you unprecedented access to a professionally constructed investment portfolio. This type of portfolio isn't even available to retail customers. It's only available through fee-only fiduciary advisors like us. Ignite Investing is designed to help real investors with real-life questions, goals, and dreams for their money who need a fair chance to get started. We built Ignite Investing with you in mind, and we're ready to get started if you are. Sign up at IgniteInvesting.com and start creating the financial future you deserve. Can you talk a little bit about business failure? Because I think people... People think that a failed business is a failed life or a failed career. And I think for many, many, many entrepreneurs, a failed business is simply an MBA. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, a failed business happens to all of us at some point. Uh, even people with very successful businesses go through bad years. Maybe it's not completely a failed business, but it's bad years. I mean, it's that's why I think, what I always tell women is what the mistake I made my, the first business I had for four years, I didn't make a penny. I was freaking out. And I think the mistake I made and when I corrected it is when I started joining professional organizations, 
I think this is not a journey to do by yourself. Uh, I think when you surround yourself with other people in the same boat than you, you realize what, what the hell happened and you get better advice. I also think if I had to do my life over again, I mean, and I, I you know, I didn't live in the digital age like you ladies are living. I think <laughs> that if I had to do my life over again, I wouldn't just start a business from one day to the next. I, this is what I would do. And I, and I teach this in my website. I would keep my day job. I would start a side hustle. I'd start the side hustle one hour a week, whether it would be eBay, Uber, Airbnb, whatever it is, one hour a week. I would save that money. I would save two years of salary in order to become self-made either through my investments or by deciding to start a business. And I don't think you start a business till you have two clients. You know, <laughs> exactly. You have have put the money first. <laughs> right. The money and the clients. Do not go buy a $20,000 website before you have any customers. No, 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 no. <laughs> Correct. I like it. This is very pragmatic. And that's why I say I'm a turtle, because I think I want to break it down for women. This is a step-by-step -step process. You know, it's a way of life. You know, like the, the reason I wanted to, you know, I finally decided to write this book is because I realized the place where I'm most congruent in my life is that I actually walk the walk of what I'm telling you all to do. You know, I don't live a grandiose life and I could, but I don't. Right. You know, and I, my value system is about being self-made. And, and to me, that's an identity that I value. And so I have to work that identity every day. So talk about, you, you say you're married, and, but your value system is about being self-made. Now, does that mean self, you, Nellie, or the two of you, you and your husband? How do you relate well, to I, your wealth I, inside your marriage? No, my, I mean, I, everybody always says to me when they meet my husband, they say, oh, you're so lucky. He's such a nice guy. And I go, no, he's lucky. <laughs> because when he, when I met him, I was a baked cake. I had my own house. It was paid off. I had my own car. It was paid off. I mean, we don't, we we're, we're really good friends and we, you know, we've raised a, a kid together, but all of our money and everything is separate. I, I am one of those women that teaches women. I say to women, you better have your own money because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we love our men. I'm not anti-man in any way, shape or form, but my child is unconditional. My child is my unconditional love. A man could be, could cheat on you tomorrow and he's bye-bye. <laughs> so to me, it's like, I don't want him to save me, but I don't want to have to save him either. So do you... Relations have to be very, very equal. I think people have to know um, that, you know, everybody's working toward being masterful with themselves. I mean, what, we shouldn't expect Prince Charming to come save us, whether Prince Charming is a, a mate, a, a boss, a company, or a government. No one's coming to save us. Yeah. And so we need to save ourselves. And I, and I tell women, I don't know if they realize that self-esteem is something that's built from the inside out, brick by brick. And it comes not from being pretty is, you know, short term, adios. You can be skinny today, fat tomorrow. You can be, you know, a single or the other things in life come and go. But what the, 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 the discipline it takes, the, you know, what it takes to be self-made, what it takes to be congruent financially, all these things, really no one can take away that self-esteem that you've created brick by brick. So, but what about polarity in relationships? One of the complaints or protests I hear is that women worry. If I have money, a man won't want me or, you know, it'll impact the romance or worse, the sex. How can we be women in our relationships who have money, but also still be happy in romance? Yeah, it's not easy to be to be fabulous. <laughs> so I will tell you this. I, 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 this is me as an older woman talking to younger women, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I had those same fears when I was in my 20s. The me that's in my 50s just goes, you know what? If somebody's, if somebody's not comfortable with who you are, go find somebody at your level or above. I mean, I think we all, we all are raised to wait for Prince Charming and we settle for too little. We settle for people that, that, compete with us or that, you know, we're lowering ourselves to make them feel better about themselves. Screw that. When you get to be in your fifties, girls, you're going to realize what a waste of damn time. If someone doesn't get you, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Next.
<laughs> I always say on this show, I think people are imbued with this value that money is a materialistic kind of thing. And it's not okay to make relationship choices based on money. But I say to people, no, it's okay. If he's broke and he's never going to be anything but broke and he's not supporting you emotionally, it's okay to leave because the money situation doesn't work for you. It's okay to have conditions for satisfaction. And in fact, you have to as a woman. It no at some point in your life, you're no longer in a position to take on men who are a project or men who are disempowering or men who are insecure and keeping you down because of it. You know what? I just think I get it because I've been there and I have a lot of compassion because I, I've been that woman. I've dated. I mean, that's one mm-hmm. of the things I have failed at miserably. I think that I've chosen in my past life so many bad guys that I go, what the hell was I thinking? I was such I'm a star. Why was I settling for these guys? But I think that it's human and it's normal, but I promise you there's no Prince Charming. (laughs) I promise you that that's not where you're great. You know, like it's great and guys will show up and the more you get rid of the ones that don't work, the quicker you're going to get to the one that is deserving of you. Yeah. You're in your book. Isn't one of the chapters called kill Prince Charming? I do. I say kill Prince Charming. (laughs) Because it doesn't freaking exist. Yeah. Kill that idea that somebody's r- riding in on a horse or a Ferrari made of money to save you. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Okay. So declaring being self-made, for someone who isn't in that mindset yet, it might feel, the idea might feel a little bit lonely. How, how would you speak to, what's your experience of being self-made? What's it like? What are the benefits? Oh my God, there's so many benefits. I mean, first of all, you can, I sleep like a baby eight hours a night. Yeah. yeah. You know, so many, I mean, I, you, you know what it is? I think it's really important for women to hear. I'm in my fifties. I have a lot of girlfriends in their fifties and they didn't do what I did. They live large and it's, it's very hard. You know what? I've gone around the country. I've, met over 250,000 women in the last three years. And I've asked all of them, uh, and especially older ones, I've asked them, if you have a a kid and a husband, but no money, are you happy? No. If you have a kid and no money, are you happy? No. If you have uh, no husband, no kid and money, are you happy and all that? And they go, yeah. (laughs) The common denominator is not the kid and the husband, it's the money. Yeah, because you can think about something else. Well, not only that, because as you get older and a lot of choices of your life go away, you're not the most beautiful girl in the room anymore. You're not, you know, no man is whistling when you go down the street, which when you're young, you hate. But then later on, you're like, I wish they would whistle. What happened? Yeah. You know, there's not as many job offers. Women get laid off in their 50s and you realize, oh, my God, why was I giving to the world and no one ever gave to me? So you have to have money when you get to your 50s. And time is a ticking. Time is a ticking. So, you know, and that's why I help so many women in their 50s catch up because it's never too late. Never too late. But those of you that are young, there's no rush. You can, you actually can do this slowly and, and win the race. I think some women listening probably can't even imagine what it would feel like to lift that weight of financial anxiety. I mean, we're just born into a culture that's worried about money. And I think, you know, and I've shared with people, you know, I went from destitute and broke and almost bankrupt and in debt to, um, you know, a, a seven figure net worth in took about a decade, approximately a decade. Um, and, and I share, I, I, I'm never will forget what it was like to not be able to fill the gas tank, to, to not be able to buy clothes or coffee and to, to be afraid when people ask me, Hey, let's go out for dinner or out for a drink that, that I would have to pay. And yeah. I'll, I'll never forget that. Right. And so everything that comes into my life now, I'm super grateful for Like Sometimes I just look around at this house and my office and my company and my employees. And I think, man, what a blessing. Like I'm just blown over with gratitude. And so I think, 
um, you know, if you're listening and you can get yourself into a place of, of creating that future, you know, like Nellie said, declare it, write it down, start speaking it. I'm going to own a building someday. I'm going to have a $2 million stock portfolio, whatever that is, right, that, that gets you up and moving and, and make it big, make it bigger than you can imagine. If you, if you knew how to do it today, you'd already have it done, right? Nothing wrong with big goals. So let's talk about fear and failure. We all know fear stops us. I think everyone's, every human being I know suffers from fear. So what's the best thing to do, you think, Nellie, if women feel like they're stopped by fear? Well, I think, you know, first of all, understand that it's just not real. It's not like, it's not a real thing. It's just like a, you know, it, it, I mean, what do you think it's trying to tell you? It's kind of like, you know, it's there to, I realize like when I worked for all those billionaires, they were afraid all the time too, but they did it anyway. Right. So it's not a table. It's not a chair. It's just like a cloud. Like when you're going through turbulence, it's a cloud and it passes. And so you have to brainwash yourself and say, if fear shows up, it means it's, it's something I have to do. You have to assign it a different meaning. I like the idea. I, I tell there's something I've realized in my life and I, and I have to remind myself sometimes, but I think as human beings, we think, oh, I feel afraid, therefore I shouldn't act. So the feeling dictates the action. But then you notice if you act, then you have different feelings. And I think in reality, the feelings come after the action. And, you know, every day I, I get up and I face fears. I mean, I hear no, right? I don't like it. Some, it so it feels personal. It's not. You're right. It's not real. Um, but I, I have created a muscle. I've sort of built a muscle in myself to act first, right? I don't care how I feel. I'm not interested in how I feel. I'm interested if I'm sick and have the flu, <laughs> but not how I emotionally feel when it comes to building my business and, and bulletproofing my life. And I think that's really what you're speaking to. Yeah, for sure. So what can people expect from this book? Well, I think I really try to explain uh, step by step how to become self-made, that it's an identity. Mm -hmm. I break it down into baby steps so that uh, it's very easy to do, um, so that you can find see that you can do it one hour a week. I speak a lot. I say to the ladies, ladies, don't buy shoes, buy buildings. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> And it's funny because in the on your website, when the quote says, don't buy shoes, buy buildings, you are wearing gorgeous shoes. <laughs> I am wearing gorgeous shoes, but you can't believe how I never pay retail for shoes ever. Really? I, I, I love shoes and I love, but I love buildings more than I love shoes because those buildings, you know, I've worked in television and I've had a successful career, but you know, TV, some years you make a lot of money, some years you don't, but guess what? All the... Every time I've made money, I live beneath my means and I bought buildings and all those buildings are rented and all those buildings give me enough revenue that I never have to do anything I don't want to do. I don't have to make any more TV shows I don't want to. I don't have to work with people I don't want to. And I have all the choices in the world. So guess what? I like buildings more than shoes. And I think the thing that makes you different is that you bought the buildings first and let the buildings buy the shoes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much because you're right. Yeah. And, and uh, so if you're listening, you want to reverse that order. We're all out there buying shoes and clothes and makeup. But the, if you put the investment first and let the income from the investment buy the stuff, you'll be much happier. <laughs> right. So, you know, your website is incredible. So first of all, I'm going to put the link to the Amazon link to purchase this book uh, in the show notes for today's episode at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash 104. So go there and buy the book. But in Nellie's website, becomingselfmade.com, which we'll also link to in the show notes. And by the way, this book is available in Spanish too. It's called Adelante in Spanish. Which in Spanish, Adelante means move your butt. Move Adelante. your butt. <laughs> I love it. But by the way, the other thing I would say to the ladies is if you if you send us your information at info at becoming selfmade.com, we'll we'll get you on our newsletters. And I do webinars, classes, uh, I do a lot of interviews with self-made women for free. And we will put you on our newsletter so you have access to all of that. And this website is just um 
just a massive amount of resources. Um, you have resources for business owners, LGP, LGBT owned businesses, veterans, African American women, East Asian women, women with disabilities, Latinas, and so much more. It, it's just uh, amazing all the topics and, uh, and information you have on here. Can you talk a little bit about who should be uh, re relying on the website for resources? Oh, yes. I think that, um, you know, the, the incredible thing about the website for everybody is I think it's great if you listen to me and, you know, you listen to Hillary and when you get inspired. But I think for me, the website is something that you can, again, I'm, as you can hear me, I've said it a lot. I'm a turtle. I do things slowly at your own time, at your own pace. You could really just take something that you want to know about. Um, I teach people how to buy buildings, for instance, and we break it down to the most minute detail, uh, but we do it in a fun way. As you can tell, don't we sound fun? Hillary and I just, just like, so I do it in a fun way because this isn't like, you know, it's not like getting your, your tooth pulled or anything. This is fun. Making money is freaking fun. It really is. And it gets more fun as you go on because you get to spend a little of it and make yourself really happy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm just looking at this article right now. Nine ways thinking like an immigrant will get you rich. This is so fantastic. You live in one of the best places in the world for women and business and you have to start at the bottom and work your way up. And this one I love. Give up your sense of entitlement. Oh my gosh, Nellie. If I never hear the word deserve again in my life, I'll be so happy. And I say that kind of tongue in cheek because certainly, you know, maybe once, you know, I use the word deserve. I'm not saying I've removed it from my lexicon, but I don't truly believe that I deserve anything. Everything I want and set a goal for, that's self-determined, that's self-made, and the world doesn't owe me anything. And yeah. I think when you start to get into the mindset, oh, my boss owes me a, a raise. Well, what's that? Guess what? That's just creating a delta between what is and what you what you want, right? Oh, um, so I like that. All right. So we're definitely going to have people buy a copy of the book. Uh, anything else? Anything else you'd like to leave us with, Nellie? Just you know, check in with us at info at becoming selfmade.com and you're going to get be part of our community. And this is a community and it's ongoing. And the idea is that we all feel like we're in it together. So you don't feel alone. This is really doable ladies. And it's about doing it together. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nellie. I appreciate your contribution to profit boss radio. Thank you so much, Hillary. Today's episode of Profit Boss Radio was brought to you by Ignite Investing. If it's time to release all that financial anxiety and make sure you're...